FFA, the Future Farmers of America, celebrated its 40th anniversary at their national convention held at Kansas City, Missouri. Thousands of blue and gold jackets were gathered in that city, the heart of America, to demonstrate their faith in the future of agriculture and to conduct their business at their national convention. What about the future of agriculture? What is the purpose of Future Farmers of America? And the FFA creed in which it states, I believe in less dependence in begging and more power in bargaining. I'll be visiting with four delegates and representatives that are at that convention. One, the president of the Illinois FFA and the vice president of that state. Also, the fourth district director and also the gentleman that came in second on the public speaking contest of the entire United States. All on U.S. Farm Report. U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report now presents Youth in Agriculture. I'm visiting with Dan Lehman, the state FFA president from the state of Illinois, and Dick Crone, who placed second in the public speaking contest in the whole United States. Dan, where's your hometown? I'm from Pleasant Plains, Illinois, which is a small town of about 500, and it's about 15 miles west of the capital of Illinois, Springfield. What kind of farming operation are you presently in? Are you in farming with your father? Or? Well, I'm helping my father this year. Now, I'll be going to school next year, so that'll cut down on the help. But it's a grain and livestock farm. It's four and acre, 400 acres, and we have 375 of corn, and then we raise cattle and hogs. Now, you being the president of the state FFA in the state of Illinois, what is your duties as president? Well, I have many duties. The main one is to represent the FFA, but I'll preside over our state convention, which is next summer at Champaign, the University of Illinois, June 10, 11, and 12. I'll also represent the FFA speaking. Now, this is my main job this year because I will be speaking at some 40 chapter banquets and I've already spoken at leadership training schools. And then again, I'll represent the FFA at other youth organizations and other organizations similar to the NFO and organizations as fertilizers business. But my main job is speaking. Well, speaking of speaking, I'd like to address this next question to Dick Crone, who was the uh, runner up in the public speaking contest for the entire nation. Dick, where is your home? I am from Harvard, Illinois. It's a town the size of 500, and it's five miles from the Wisconsin state line. Now, what type of operation are you engaged in agricultural-wise? I am also in operation with my father. I live on a 110-acre livestock and grain farm. My, famous, my most successful livestock operation is swine production. I raise registered and Chester White and Durock swine. Well, this certainly must have been a great experience and a honor for you to come in second place in this public speaking contest of the entire nation in the United States amongst uh, all the public speakers for the Future Farmers of America. What was your topic that you spoke on? My main topic was on the world food crisis. The title of my speech was Hunger Allows No Choice. Hunger Allows No Choice. Well, Dick, we'll get back to you on that topic, but now I'd like to visit with Dan about the purposes of the Future Farmers of America. Dan, most everyone knows that FFA, the FFA motto is learning to do, doing to learn, and earning to live, and living to serve. Could you explain what is basically the purpose of the Future Farmers of America? Well, sir, in general terms, the purpose of our organization, the FFA, is to develop rural leadership, cooperation, and citizenship. And probably the most tremendous thing about our organization is the way that we go about developing these abilities. Now, we could take any one of them. Leadership, you must have forms of public speaking, as Dick's already talked about. Citizenship, there was a conference in Washington, D.C. this past summer for the state presidents of all the state associations, and we visited with government. 
and learn about our American heritage. Now, cooperation, this is done in chapter meetings. And all this is based around what we are an intricate part of, and that is vocational education of agriculture. Now, this is through the U.S. Office of Education, and in classroom activities, we learn much about these three things. A main part of it is serving. As the motto pointed out, the last sign, the last line in the motto was earning to, or learning to serve. And we do serve in many different positions, as mine as president, as the district directors and vice presidents that we have here. I noticed on the latest uh, National Future Farmers publication that uh, the group of uh, the FFA students all across the country right there on the Capitol steps, and I noticed your picture right on the front page. Could you tell us a little bit about your trip back to Washington? <laughs> yes. Well, this, as I mentioned, was with all state presidents in our organization of FFA, of which there are, there are 50 state associations. And while we were at that conference, we met with the President of the United States, Lyndon Johnson, also Speaker McCormick, Speaker of the House, Gerald Ford, and many others. It was based around cooperation and citizenship. And we developed citizenship mainly through learning about our government and what we can do, how we can help out our congressmen and senators. We did this through counseling with them. One of the highlights of the entire meeting was a breakfast sponsored by our organization where each state representative asked his senator and his congressman or senators to come to the breakfast. And we got to eat bre breakfast with them. In my case, it was Paul Finley, Congressman Paul Finley. Many others, I saw so many names that you hear over the nation so many times. And it was really tremendous just getting to talk and, and meeting with these men. Experience in itself, actually. Yes, sir. Dan Lehman, you are president of the FFA of the state of Illinois. You just came back, or on your way back, uh, from the experience of your national convention. I know uh, a lot of activity went on down there this year. Uh, one particular was a vote on whether to let girls in the organization. Could you give us a rundown a little bit about some of the highlights and the purposes and the main agenda that was uh, at your national convention this year? Yes, well, let's first start with the main agenda. As each national convention, there are certain procedures that we do have to go through and that's recognizing outstanding young men in the FFA or our organization and recognizing people that have helped us. So you might have guessed that this main convention is developed around that. And then a very important part of that, very important part of that is our business, where we determine, as you mentioned, about the girls and our dues and anything that the FFA faces at that time. There were four major items of business this year, one being the girls. And as last year, it was voted down. So girls will not become members of our organization. Now you probably can see already two sides of this, because to be a member of our organization, you have to be in VOAG classes. <clears throat> girls which are in VOAG classes are not supposed to be members of the FFA, and they wonder why. But as was discussed, our heritage was built, and our organization was built with young men. Another thing was that our national dues were set when our organization began in 1928 at 10 cents. The dues that our organization got up until this year were 10 cents, and this is the first time we've increased, and we increased our national dues to one dollar. What, uh, what would you say was the main purpose of increasing your dues? There's a combination of things. One, the inflation, because we can't keep down the expenses of the convention and the programs and leadership development that we have in our organization without increasing the dues. The past couple years, we had to reach into reserve funds, which we have plenty in reserve, but there won't be plenty if we keep losing money. Another topic that was brought up this year was reapportionment, reapportionment of delegates to the National Convention. At this time, there are two delegates from each state at our National Convention, and we apportion this year to have two delegates from each state and then another delegate for every 10,000 members over the first 10,000 that each state has. The last item of business that we discussed was a national center. Now this is a two million dollar program, first stage program, that we're building or hope to build someday in Washington, D.C. And we gave our national board the okay to go ahead and develop this center. Dan Lehman, president of the FFA of the state of Illinois. Dick, you placed second in the FFA public speaking contest of the whole United States. And you mentioned that your topic was, and your title was, Hunger Allows No Choice. You know, not too long ago, uh, Monsignor, or Father O'Rourke, I should say, who was 
the national director of the National Catholic Rural Life Conference. He made an uh, extensive study also, and he came up with a television program here recently on titled, uh, Cheap Food Means Hungry People. And so I'd just like for you to explain to us uh, uh, how you came about uh, deciding to choose this topic as your subject. Well, according to the National FFA Public Speaking Rule, the subject matter for these speeches must be something concerning agriculture. And I found that this was probably one of the most interesting subjects that I could possibly find. I knew I was interested in, in it, and I have been for probably several years now. So this is why I chose this subject. It relates to agriculture, and it's also something which I found very interesting. This is right. And not only relates to agriculture, but it's uh, an interest uh, nationwide, uh, the hunger of the world, and also over here in the United States. Could you give us a little bit of your background, uh, uh, what you had prepared in your speech, and the research that you did uh, for this presentation? I started preparing this speech about one year and a half ago, in June 1967. Most of the material which I used for this speech was material which I received in magazine articles in many of the popular farm magazines, and also materials for which I sent for from the Department of the War and Hunger in Washington. Could you give us a sample of your speech? Some of the contents uh, that uh, made you uh, come in second place, some of the important parts in it. Well, in my speech, I tried to point out the importance or the problem that exists in our world today. I said that over one, one half billion people on this earth today go to bed hungry every night. This is one half of the world's population. And that millions of these people are actually starving. And quite often, we do not realize this in the United States. Also, also, we think that these people are only in Asia and Africa or India. And this is true. A vast majority of these people are hungry in these countries. But this problem does also exist here, right here in America. And this is right. We have many... Uh, hunger does not distinguish between race, religion, or color. But we do have several different groups that a uh, large majority of them are going to bed hungry every night. I'm talking about, for example, the American Indian or the Southern, Southern Negro or immigrants from other countries, mainly the poor people. In my speech, I pointed out that last year in Tennessee, there was a story of five small children who devoured a live chicken, feathers, blood and all, because they were starving to death. And this, I think, is, exemplifies the problem that does exist in the United States right now. Did you find anything in your studies and research that you prepared for this speech the main purpose on why that we uh, have hunger not only here in the United States but uh, worldwide. I mean, why that uh, people are, are starving? Uh, there are probably two reasons, two major factors in the world food crisis. One is food production. Right now, we do not have enough food in many countries to feed this population of the world. And the second one is population growth. Our population is multiplying at a rate of two and one half percent per year. So that by the year 2000, we'll have our world population will double. So these two factors, population and also food production, are the reasons why we are half suffering from this problem right now. And then by the year of 2000, the whole world population is going to be expected to be fed by uh, uh, the United States, uh, Canada, and the Oceania countries, which uh, would be Australia and New Zealand. So uh, the whole world is going to be depending on the United States and these countries. So this is going to uh, mean that uh, not only a production, but it's going to be um, important that uh, the farmers, the future farmers like you boys here, uh, are brought back to American agriculture to stay on the farm to produce this production. Uh, Dick, what kind of experience uh, do you think that this public speaking uh, has given you uh, uh, confidence and, and for your future? I think that the FFA public speaking is affected my life more than any other thing up to this point. It has opened many opportunities to me that I know other future farmers will never have the experience to have. I have met people from all over the United States and shared with them many memorable experiences. Also, I have learned through public speaking the ability to express myself, something which I will be able to use and which I will have to use every day of my life to communicate and express my ideas with my fellow man. Dick, I'm, let me ask you this question. Uh, what are your intentions after you finish school? What uh, type of, of uh, occupation you're going to go into? Are you going back to the farm? After I graduate from high school this year, I plan to go to the University of Illinois and major in agricultural communications. 
And uh, after you graduate from college, uh, what field do you think you go into then? In, in the communications field? My plans right now are probably to go into either broadcasting or newspaper article writing. Well, why do you feel then that uh, uh, today that uh, a lot of the youth is leaving the farms and uh, not going back to the farm or not going into agriculture? American agriculture in the productive end has been very, very efficient. And we have pointed out that we do not need as many people to produce the food that we did a while ago. But because boys are not going into productive farming, uh, there are still many, many opportunities open to them in agriculture. Agriculture is America's largest industry. And these boys may not go into farming, but they uh, hopefully will go into the many related occupations. Well, this is right. Uh, actually, agriculture has become more efficient. We've produced uh, uh, more pounds of uh, ham from uh, the lean meat hog today than uh, the old style uh, of uh, bacon uh, from three hams. Uh, we've uh, produced more uh, corn uh, from a bushel of, of uh, corn than any time uh, in the history, but yet uh, we still are operating under the old uh, marketing structure and uh, price structure. Jim, I'd like to turn now to Jim Johnson, who is vice president of the FFA in the state of Illinois. Jim, it's a pleasure having you on the program. And where do you make your home? I live in DeKalb, Illinois, with my parents on a 200-acre farm. Now, you're uh, a senior in high school, or have you graduated? No, I graduated from high school two years ago. Then you are actually in farming operation with your yes, father. Yes, I am. Now, you plan to stay on the farm? My plans now are to stay on the farm with my father. Jim, one of the outstanding uh, features uh, and backbones of the Future Farmers of America is the FFA creed, which every high school student and every FFA student has to learn and recite. And actually, this isn't this uh, probably the backbone of the organization? Yes, it tells uh, basically our purposes and goals in life. Could you uh, recite the FFA creed, please? Yes, uh, first I'd like to give a little background of the creed. It was written uh, and adopted at the third convention and has since been revised only once to update it to the future goals of the FFA to make it a little bit more contemporary. Now, as I said, it was written by E.M. Tiffany, and still the original version means so much to all of us. It consists of five paragraphs. I believe in the future of farming with a faith born not of, with a faith born not of words, but of deeds. Achievements won by present and past generations of agriculturalists and the promise of better days through better ways, even as the better things we now enjoy have come up to us from the struggles of former years. I believe that to live and work on a good farm or to be engaged in other agricultural pursuit is pleasant as well as challenging, for I know the joys and discomforts of agricultural life and hold an inborn fondness for those associations which, even in hours of discouragement, I cannot deny. I believe in leadership from ourselves and respect from others. I believe in my own ability to work efficiently and think clearly with such knowledge and skill as I can secure, and in the ability of progressive agriculturists to serve our own and the public interest in producing and marketing the product of our toil. I believe in less dependence on begging and more power in bargaining, in the life abundant and enough honest wealth to help make it so for others as well as myself in less need for charity and more of it when needed, in being happy myself and playing square with those whose happiness depends upon me. I believe that rural America can and will hold true to the best traditions in our national life and that I can exert an influence in my home and my community which will stand solid for my part in that inspiring task. Thank you, Jim. That uh, is a creed that <coughs> is uh, well said, and I think that it uh, says a lot, uh, wrapped up in, in a real night nutshell and, and package. Jim, you're district director for the state of Illinois. I wondered if you could explain uh, the director's duties and just a little bit about the state structure of the Future Farmers of America. Okay. Starting with the structure of the state and starting at the top and working down, we first have the, the state level, the state is divided into five districts, each being about equal in size and each about a fifth of the state. And then each district is divided into five sections. 
giving us 25 sections in the state. In charge of each section is a vice president, or a president as you choose to call. And from these presidents is chosen a director. And my job is district four director for Illinois. And then going to the, some of the, the duties of the director to start with, he is a, the director is a member of the executive committee and this is composed of the four major state officers, the five directors, and then our adult leaders. Now, what is the purpose of the executive committee? Well, the executive committee meets to uh, transact business that comes between any regular state officers meeting that is imperative and must be considered and cannot wait for the, for the next state officers meeting is the main duty of the executive committee. Now, what about your leadership school? Well, the leadership school is a duty of the sec is the duty of the sectional president, and in this, he is in charge. He conducts it, master of ceremonies, you might say. And at these schools, he um, takes care of the whole works, and it is for the chapter officers of the whole section, and each officer intends and has, as it is called the leadership training for the year. He is, uh, gets an insight into his duties. We generally have a major state officer there that provides us with inspiration and information. And there generally is a banquet at these uh, schools too. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you're a senior, and this is the last year in your high school. Uh, what ki type of farming operation do you have with your father? Well, I live on a 440 acre farm with my father and we have a family type partnership with my grandfather, two uncles and my father and uh, there is a total of 1200 acres in the whole operation. What would you say was the most climax thing this year at the National Convention? I know a lot of activity went on. What would in your opinion would you say was the highlights of this year's convention? Well I think uh, the one thing would be the business session that we conducted and it was a very busy session and a uh, monumental session for the future of our organization and for the, the things that we did are going to have a great effect on our organization. I'd like to go back to Jim Johnson, who is vice president of the state of Illinois FFA. Jim, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the FFA foreign exchange program? Uh, I know you were a foreign exchange student, I believe, uh, you said for the country of Denmark. Could you explain a little bit about the exchange program? Yes, the exchange program, international understanding as we call it, is organized both on the national level and on state levels. I was on the Illinois Association exchange program and I was selected to spend three months in the country of Denmark working on a farm. Now on this farm, uh, it was designed to be a typical Danish farm, the one that I was uh, placed on, but it was actually a government research station, and I was very fortunate to have a Japanese boy, a Swiss boy, a German, and four Danish working on the farm with me. So we had uh, quite a time learning the language and, in general, communicating, and uh, I would say getting a real, true international understanding. Now, uh, we send two boys to Denmark every year, and this year we started sending a boy to West Germany, and we're hoping to increase the program. The national level also has an exchange program, which they work out with several different countries. Now I'd like to turn a last question to the president of the state of Illinois FFA chapter, uh, Dan Lehman. What would you feel was the highlight down at the National Convention this year? Well, each year, uh, I think one of the most important things at our National Convention is that of the selecting of national officers. Now, this is when they select six young men to serve on behalf of the FFA for one year. And they will drop out of school as I, but their office is on a national level, much higher. They develop many, many leadership abilities and speaking abilities. This year, Illinois, our state, was very fortunate in having a national vice president, Tom Johnson, the past state president from Illinois, sought an office and he was elected at our national convention at, as a position of central region vice president. And he will be in charge of 13 states and probably travel 
close to 50 or 60,000 miles this year serving on behalf of the FFA. Well, certainly uh, your state of Illinois then ought to be proud of your elected officer nationally and, and the accomplishments that you made at the National Convention. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for appearing on uh, U.S. Farm Report here today. Uh, I've been visiting with Dan Lehman, a president of the Illinois FFA, president of FFA of that state, Dick Crone, who came in second in the public speaking contest of the whole United States. And this is certainly something to be proud of, Dick. Jim Johnson, who is vice president of the FFA state of Illinois. And Jim Buck, who is a director of District 4. Thank you, gentlemen. The time is here that all America get concerned about getting fair farm prices for the future farmers, the ranchers in America, and save the private enterprise system instead of having the father's farm alone. As Senator McGovern once pointed out, that fair farm prices can stimulate the cash registers up and down the main streets of America. Every bit of progress in history has been made over the bodies of empty-headed fools who giggled and snickered at those working every step of the way. This has been Don Mack reporting for U.S. Farm Report. U.S. Farm Report has featured Youth in Agriculture. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at this same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is a gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of agricultural producers.